Here we're going to look at a finite sum involving a nested radical. So let's look. We want to look at the sum as m goes from 1 to n of 1 over the square root of m plus the square root of m squared minus 1. So you might say, well, why are we just looking at a finite sum? Well, why not an infinite sum? Well, as you'll see, this sum will diverge. And we'll do that by calculating this nth sum. And notice that the limit would go to infinity. Also, you could do like a p-series test. I'm comparing this to one over the square root of m, and that's a known divergent series. And we're gonna use a trick to denest the radical that's in the denominator. And it follows from this formula right here, which we will prove. And that's the square root of a plus the square root of b is equal to the square root of one half times the quantity a plus the square root of a squared minus b, and then plus the square root of one half times the quantity a minus the square root of a squared minus b. Okay, so let's get to proving this tool. So we're gonna start with the right-hand side of the equation and work towards the left-hand side of the equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So the right-hand side of the equation looks like one half, and then we have the quantity a plus the square root of a squared minus b. Good, and that's all under a radical. And then for the next term, we'll have that's plus the square root of one half, and then kind of the same thing, but which is with just a minus sign here. So we have a minus the square root of a squared minus b. Great. So now what I'm going to do is square this entire thing, which means the equality that we're building will not be this exactly, but it will be this squared equals a plus radical b. And we'll see that. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna go ahead and square this. And so in order to do that, we need to multiply it out. So we're gonna get this first term squared, but that just deletes the radical. So that gives us one half and then a plus the square root of a squared minus b, good. And then we have plus two times the product of each. So let's see what we get for that. So that's gonna be plus two times, and now we can put a square root and everything inside the square root. So notice this one half times one half is gonna give us a quarter in the square root. And then we also have a plus the square root of a squared minus b times a minus the square root of a squared minus b. And we're gonna be able to simplify that in a bit. Okay, good. So just to reiterate, we took this term times this term and had to multiply it by two because two of those are showing up in that product. And now we have the last term squared. So notice that's gonna give us one half a um, minus the square root of a squared minus b. Good. And now let's notice some stuff cancel. So notice here we have a one half times a positive a squared minus b, and that's under a square root. And here we have a one half and then the negative of the same thing. So that means this guy and this guy can cancel. And then furthermore, we've got a one half a and another half a. So that's gonna add up to a, good. So that's what we get from there. And now let's see what we get inside this radical. So we're gonna have plus, now this two and this one fourth that's in the radical will cancel each other because we bring the fourth out, have to take its square root, that becomes a half. And now we can use the difference of squares formula here. So notice using the difference of squares formula here, we have a squared minus the square root of a squared minus b quantity squared. Okay, good. But obviously the square and the square root cancel each other here, but then the a squared and the a squared cancel and the minus turns the b from negative to being positive. And so in the end, we have this is a plus the square root of b. But now notice that's the same thing as the square root of a plus the square root of b, and then we take that quantity squared. So we've shown the equality of this term up here and this term up here, which is exactly what we wanted to do. And now we can use this tool to simplify this denominator. So notice the denominator is exactly in the form of this left-hand side. If we set a equal to m, and then b is going to be equal to m squared minus one. Good. And now let's go ahead and calculate what a squared minus b is just for good measure. So notice a squared minus b is going to be equal to m squared minus m squared minus one. So in other words, that's just one. 
but that's really good news because that means that the square root of a squared minus b is the square root of one. In other words, it's just one. So this part is a pretty simple in our case. So let's see what that does for us. That allows us to write this thing as the sum m equals one to n. And now I'm gonna rewrite this nested square root using this construction that I did down here. So notice that's gonna give me one over, and now I have the square root of one half times the quantity. So I have a plus that, but that's just m plus one. So I have m plus one. Good, and then notice I have plus the same thing, but an a minus one, in other words, an m minus one. So that's gonna be plus the square root of one half and then m minus one. And that's all in the denominator. Now what I wanna do is notice that I have a one half under the square root in each of these cases. I can flip that up to a square root of two in the numerator and bring it outside. So let's go ahead and do that. We can bring a square root of two out and now we have the sum m equals one to n of one over. Now we have radical m plus one plus radical m minus one. Good. And now we'll do kind of the standard trick whenever you see anything like that. And that is to rationalize the denominator. And so we'll do that by multiplying this thing by radical m plus one minus radical m minus one on the numerator and the denominator. So let's see what we get when we do that. Good. So notice when we multiply that out in the denominator, we'll have m plus one minus m minus one by the difference of squares formula. So that's going to give us the following. So we'll have the square root of two in front of the whole sum, the sum m equals one to n, and then I have radical m plus one minus radical m minus one over two because I'm gonna have m plus one minus m minus one, but that's exactly two. Great. Now I wanna take that two out of the denominator, cancel it with the root two in the numerator to make a one over root two. So I've got a one over root two, and now I have this sum m equals one to n of radical m plus one minus radical m minus one. And so you can look at that and see that it's gonna be a telescoping series, but instead of just writing down a bunch of terms and arguing which terms cancel, I'm gonna break it into two sums and then re-index the sums so that they cancel each other a little bit more naturally. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is gonna be one over root two. And now, like I said, I'm gonna break it into two sums. So I've got this sum m equals one to n of radical m plus one minus the sum m equals one to n of radical m minus one. Okay, great. So now I wanna re-index those things into each other. So maybe I wanna re-index this guy right here so that instead of having an m plus one, it has an m minus one so that we can combine it with the other one. So let's see what I would need to do to do that. I would need to send m to m minus two because then m minus two minus one is m minus one. But that's gonna have the effect of, instead of starting this at m equals one, we're starting at m minus two equals one, which is the same thing as m equals three. Good. And then instead of stopping this at n, it's going to stop at n plus two kind of for a similar reason. So here we're stopping at n plus two. Okay, so let's just kind of write that down a little bit more carefully. So we have one over root two, and now we're gonna have this sum m equals three to n plus two of root m minus one, and then minus this sum m equals one to n of root m minus one. Good. Now what I wanna do is pull pieces out of each of these sums until they're exactly the same. So notice here, I need to pull out the n plus one and the n plus two term. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we pull out the n plus one and the n plus two term, then we're gonna be left with this sum m equals three to n of root m minus one. So that would be all the other terms. And then plus, so the n plus one term is going to be root n and then the n plus two term is gonna be root n plus one. Good. 
So just to reiterate, that's the N plus one and the N plus two term plugged in there. Okay, and we still have a one over root two out in front of the whole thing. Now we're gonna do something similar here, but now we have to pr pull something out at the bottom because notice this starts at one instead of at three. And so let's go ahead and pull something out of the bottom here. We need to pull out the M equals one and the M equals two term. So notice the M equals one term is the square root of zero. And then the M equals two term is the square root of one because we have two minus one is one. Great. And now we can rewrite the rest of this as the sum as M goes from three to N of root M minus one. Great. And now I've put all that in parentheses carefully. And so now we can start canceling things out. So notice this sum right here is the sum m equals three to n of radical m minus one. And that's exactly the same as this sum over here. So this guy and this guy are gonna cancel each other. And so we're just going to be left with this and this keeping in mind that the square root of zero is zero and the square root of one is one. And then we have this radical two out front. So notice our final answer is one over root two. And then we have root n plus root n plus one. So maybe I'll put this in descending terms. So root n plus one plus root n and then minus one. Good. And that is gonna be the final answer for our goal sum. Okay, that's a good place to stop.